I am a senior lecturer, or maybe I wasn't, but anyway, I am a senior lecturer in uh, criminology at Mid Sweden University. So, hands down, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I've never been a lawyer. <laughs> but um, I did do my PhD about homicide and violence in Scotland at the University of Edinburgh. Um, and today I'll be talking a little bit about this, what I found regarding the homicide data. Um, talking about homicide over time, how it's changed in order to provide a bit of a context for you to know how homicide has changed uh, over time. So first I'll be going through talking about the incidence of homicide and how that's changed over time and then talking a little bit about different types of homicide and how they have changed uh, before ending on talking about the implications for policy and hopefully the law. So starting off with the incidence of number of homicides per year, as you can see here, it's a strong downward trend and has been going down for some time. Uh, this is data from the Scottish Government, so, and it includes homicides, including both murder and uh, culpable homicides. So if we see in 2016-17, there were 61 homicides, I think, and that uh, demonstrates a decrease of about 24% since 1990 and about 54% since the peak in 0405. So even though it's been going up or down a bit, we can see that it is a strong downward trend overall. So overall in Scotland, uh, it's really decreasing, despite all of these kind of headlines that pop up from there again. Uh, we see a strong downward trend in homicide. Um, but as I'm arguing in my thesis and in other papers, this is not enough. We need to look at different types of homicide, because within that big decrease that we've seen, there might be different types of homicide that have changed differently. There might be certain types that may not have uh, decreased at all, or may even have increased. And if you just look at all homicides, that might contain hidden counter trends. Uh, and of course, this is important because it might relate to different prevention strategies as well for different types of homicide that you can't get to if you just look at them all. Um, and simply put as well, homicide, one homicide can be so different from another. As we all know, just thinking about it, a homicide occurring in the streets, you know, between people being drunk on a Friday night, it's very different from a homicide occurring, for instance, in the context of the home, between two intimate partners, and all of this. So, it's important to look at different types of homicides and how that's changed over time in order to really get a feel of how homicide has been changing. Uh, so, that was what I did or have been doing. Um, and for the homicide data, I used data from the Scottish Homicide Database uh, held by Police Scotland. And I looked at homicides occurring from 2000 to 2015, and that gave me a total of 1,344 cases over this time period. And as you can see, there are a bit more offenders than cases. So, yeah. Um, I also only used cases that were identified as murders by police Scotland. So this is not cases that eventually were labelled as murder in court, but by police Scotland as an initial kind of assessment. Uh, so I, I excluded all culpable homicides from this data. And in order to identify the types that I've been talking or will be talking about, I looked at variables related to the victim, offender, but also the incident itself. And what that gave me was a total of four different types of homicide that occur over, over this whole time period of 2000 to 2015. So the four were called stabbing, no weapon bludgeoning, rivalry and femicide. And the biggest one, which was about a third of all the cases, I labelled stabbing because that was the most common method of killing or cause of death. So it was most involved with uh, using a sharp instrument, most commonly a male offender against a male victim who in some shape or form knew each other, either as known or acquaintances or friends. Um, it was motivated by some sort of fight or argument. It occurred inside in a private setting and the weapon itself was improvised, me meaning that it wasn't brought to the scene by the offender, it was rather just something that was there was taken and used in homicide or murder. Um, and alcohol and drugs figured quite heavily uh, from the victim's side at least. So I, it was a bit trouble, I couldn't use the, the variable for the offenders, but it was clear that it was a context of alcohol or drug, uh, drugs used. So, in, in short, this would be a homicide occurring between people who know each other, sitting in someone's home, having a drink, and then they start fighting, and that fight escalates, someone grabs a kitchen knife, and someone ends up dead, basically. Uh, the second largest type, which was almost as big, about 30%, was called no weapon bludgeoning. Very similar to stabbing, with the biggest difference here, the use of weapons. So either no weapon was used, meaning that the victim was killed using the hands or feet of the offender, or a blunt instrument like a hammer or baseball bat was used. 
uh, but otherwise are very similar. Male offender, male victim, uh, known to each other, some shape or form, most common friend or acquaintances, but also a smaller subset of family members here that weren't intimate partners, about 20%. Uh, and motivated by some sort of fight or argument, uh, inside in a private setting, and uh, the, the weapon choice was also utilized, and alcohol being quite heavy as well. So this means that about 60% of all homicides in Scotland occurring during this time was of this nature. It was very improvised, it wasn't very planned, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing happening between people who know each other inside of a private setting. Um, the third type that I've identified called rivalry, that was about a quarter of the cases, and this is perhaps what you would think about sometimes when you see the headlines, so this is what we think of as kind of gang-related homicides between young men. So rivals was the most common relationship between victim and offender. Uh, so that could be gang rivals, but it could also be kind of these intergenerational fights uh, between families who've been feuding for some time. Uh, feud or faction rivalry was the most common motive. Uh, this homicide occurred most commonly in a public place. Uh, and between young male offenders and young male victims, again, alcohol and drugs figured quite heavily. Uh, sharp weapon was the most common uh, weapon used, but there was also a smaller subset of about 20% here where firearms were used. And now firearms is very uncommon in Scotland overall, but if a firearm was used, it was most likely to be this type of homicide. Uh, and the weapon was most commonly brought to the scene by the offender. So this could indicate some level of planning as well in this type of homicide. And then the final type that I've identified is called femicide, and this is what we would consider a domestic homicide. So uh, a male offender against a female victim who were current or previous intimate partners occurring inside in a private setting motivated by some sort of fight or argument or what police Scotland calls domestic dispute, which is a fight in the context of an intimate relationship. And the most common weapon here was a sharp instrument, uh, usually a knife. Uh, so these are the four different types that come out, but I also wanted to see how these have changed over time, right? Because that was also the point of this. Um, so in this graph, I show each type as a line, and um, how it's changed over time in relation to the first year, but also in relation to each other. So first of all, we have the stabbing and the no weapon bludgeoning, that's the blue and red lines. Um, they remain quite stable over time. They fluctuate a bit, but in the end, they return to a, a level similar to the initial years. So we can say that they have kind of remained unchanged. But then we have the rivalry type, which is the green line. First, we can see quite a dramatic increase in this specific, uh, specific type of homicide, but then, in the end, it's actually decreased by about 21%. And then we have the femicide, which is the domestic homicide. In this context, we can see that they've actually increased by about as much. So what this means is that I'm looking here at a <coughs> relative increase. So as I showed you in the beginning, overall, in absolute terms, all types of homicide has decreased over time. So the actual number of each type has come down. But within this decrease, I wanted to know whether or not certain types have decreased more than others. And yes, they have, because it seems that this decrease that we've been seeing is driven by these rivalry homicides. So we've seen a massive decrease in public homicides between young men using sharp knives. Um, but um, other types of homicides, including domestic homicides, has not decreased by nearly as much. And this, of course, has important implications for uh, policy and stuff as well. Um, but overall, this means that there are different types of homicides demonstrating different trends over time. So this is what we need to... That's, that's why it's important to look at different types of homicide, not just homicide overall. And although there's been an absolute decrease in all types of homicides, some types have been increased in relative terms, meaning they've become more common over time. Uh, so while lethal public, pu public violence involving sharp instruments has decreased dramatically over time, lethal violence uh, in domestic settings has not decreased by nearly as much. So as I said, this has important implications for policy and hopefully also the law. Um, so while not conclusive, we can see that certain policy interventions seems to have an effect on this decrease in public lethal violence. And I say not conclusive because it wasn't my intention with my thesis to test the efficiency of certain policy interventions. Uh, but I can still see that certain things such as implications, uh, implementations and stuff by the Violence Reduction Unit and the No Lives But Lives campaigns and things like that uh, did concur with decreases of this public sort of homicide. So even though I can't say it's a causal relationship, there's something going on. And also that the 
view to view homicide as a public health problem also seems to have kind of moved towards this decrease of this. But as I said, the, this shows decrease in one specific type of homicide, uh, the rivalry type, whereas we haven't seen this decrease in other types, such as the domestic homicide, but also homicides occurring indoors, because even though they haven't really decreased or increased, the um, no weapon bludgeoning or the stabbing uh, homicides have remained stable, meaning that they haven't really decreased as much either. So all homicides occurring indoors have actually either remained stable or increased in relative terms. So that also opens up two questions about how do we, what, what policy intervention do we put for this? How do we police people indoors? It's quite a tricky question when it comes to homicide. Um, so for policy reasons, it has a lot of interesting uh, implications. But of course, we're here also to talk about the law today. And uh, even though that's your uh, area of expertise and not mine, I will leave you with this kind of end note here, saying that homicide is very mundane. And by that I mean it's very rarely planned, it's very impulsive, um, it's essentially escalating fights between acquaintances, and alcohol and drugs figure quite heavily here. It's not necessarily what we would conceive as wicked. Um, it is very mundane. Uh, it is not those people over there who commit those crimes. It's very ordinary people, and it kind of is um, things that just got out of hand, and it, it happens to end in the death of one of the people involved. And this has, of course, implications for stuff like provocation and self-defense and culpability in relation to the law. And seeing that this is a very uh, mundane sort of act of violence. But I'll stop there because that's your expertise. <coughs> And um, I hope that this has provided some context, at least for homicides over time. And yes, thank you very much for uh, having me over here. Yes? Thank you. Thank you.